Hey, welcome to Film vs. Movie, the podcast where we debate the cinema you hate. I'm your co-host, Belton Delane Facey. And my name's Chris Scher. And on this podcast, we watch the films that have been slandered, desecrated, and sold back to Marvel by public opinion. <laughs> and one of us tells you why it's actually pretty good. And the other one tells you why it's a steaming pile of shit. And this episode is the second of three double feature face-offs. Instead of debating a single film like we usually do, we're arguing which of two films is better. Then you guys will decide who won. Check out the link in the episode description or Instagram bio at Film vs. Movie Pod. And we'll reveal the results of the vote on our anniversary show on June 25th, where the loser of two face-offs faces punishment. And today's face-off will be Daredevil vs. Ghost Rider. We never decided on that punishment, right? Uh, uh. Uh, we narrow it down. We do We do need to finalize it. We were talking about, like, spicy food. What if we just had to eat too much food? <laughs> like, we had to eat... Whoever lost had to pound, like, five to seven pounds of spaghetti and then try and record the podcast. The, uh, the only way I'm doing that punishment is if I run a half marathon right before we record. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> What are, we're about like seven miles from your apartment. <laughs> yeah, just uh, just run here and change. Do the podcast super sweaty. <laughs> <laughs> nope. Run here, change, pound a bunch of spaghetti, and then do the podcast. <laughs> oh, oh, my God. So, yeah, we uh, t- uh, today's face-off is Daredevil and Ghost Rider. Two, like, pre-MCU Marvel m- movies, which both of them also have the same writer-director. Yeah, I didn't realize that until you told me that. Yeah, w- uh, uh, yeah, which actually f- uh, fits perfectly. So, uh, uh, just some shared backstory for both of them. For those who don't know, during the 90s, Marvel was on the brink of bankruptcy. So, they sold a lot of movie rights to a bunch of their characters that... Uh, that's how we got like the X Men movie franchises and all the Spider Man uh, movies, and so these uh, these two characters were part of the bunch that got so- uh, that got sold off and eventually developed in- into feature films. Well, they struck gold with Ghost Rider. I can't really talk mm-hmm. about Daredevil. But- <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean that. The- yeah, now's the perfect time to get uh, get into the plot. Do you, uh, you want to get into Daredevil first, or sure? All right. So, uh, uh, so Daredevil, if you don't know, is a superhero who is blind, uh, blind, and he fights crime on the streets of Hell Ki- Hell's Kitchen in Manhattan, and he uses like all his senses, like sonar, to uh, to visualize and see everything around him. Yeah. Yeah, so the movie opens on Daredevil evading police, posing on the top of a church. He crashes through. The priest recognizes him, calls him Matt, and and takes off his mask, revealing to the audience that he is blind. And and then we flash back to a young Matt Murdock. He witnesses his dad, who's a washed-up boxer, extort money from someone for a crime boss as he runs away he, he runs towards toxic waste and gets blinded by it he wakes up in the hospital to all his senses heightened to superhuman uh, levels giving him sonar he- hearing and then extreme agility and power yeah i just kind of wish they're like yeah you ran into a barrel full of toxic spiders <laughs> and he only got bit on the eyes <laughs> yeah like uh, like g- keep in mind daredevil came out in 2003 which is a year after the first sam raimi spider-man uh, uh, movie it it kind of does feel like they saw that era like okay just radiation toxic excuse for everything wait that's when like dared the comic wasn't older uh, no the uh, i mean the comic is older i'm saying the movie yeah yeah but uh, uh, but it's like I also have to say the way they framed him getting getting blinded was also funny because when you look at it, it's like where was he running to? Like <laughs> he was running straight into those barrels, no plan to make a turn, and and it's like they they could have pulled it off a bit better. Yeah, well, that's kind of the thing about this film. <laughs> <laughs> 
after that, his fa- uh, his father is kill- uh, killed by a crime boss for refusing to throw a fight. And then we flash forward to Matt as an adult. He, uh, he and his friend Foggy are lawyers with their own firm, and they provide a lot of pro bo- uh, bono services. And they're in the middle of... a. Uh, uh, of a case uh, uh, working for a woman who wants to prosecute her abusive ex-husband uh, and the guy uh, the guy gets off so later that night Matt dresses up as Daredevil finds him at a nightclub beats him and uh, and then lets him get run over by the C train and, uh, and leaves the crime scene for police terrible way to go Terror and worst train to get run over by. Yeah. Like if I were gonna get run over, four trains, nice. Maybe the G. That's like kind of you're like, oh shit, you got ran over by the G. That's interesting. Uh, I feel. Uh, uh, I feel like if I got run, uh, run over by the G, that that is on my uh, on like my low uh, my lower tier, just because it's the shortest train. I want I want to get run over by a big boy train. <laughs> Look, if you get run over by the G, you're like, damn, how'd you do that? You had so much time before it hit you. <laughs> yeah, it's like, yeah, it's like, why didn't you try getting pushed over at, like, the end of the platform? Yeah, if you got pushed over at the last third, fine. Like, you're, you're not even getting hit. <laughs> it's kind of interesting. It's like a good, you're like, oh, I got ran over by the G. They're like, oh, I guess the front half. <laughs> Yeah, ju- uh, just like super. Uh, I feel like everyone listening who doesn't live in New York just tuned out for that minute. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, so uh, uh, so after uh, after that, um, we uh, uh, there's uh, we go we follow Matt back to his apartment at, uh, as he undresses and goes uh, and goes to bed. We see. Just the toll years as Daredevil has put on his body, all the scars, uh, teeth co- uh, coming out, a strange uh, relationships. Um, back at the crime scene, a reporter named Ben Yurick, he follows the, uh, Daredevil for uh, for his paper, and he unknowingly attracts a, a attention for his articles following the Kingpin, who's a major crime boss. Not knowing the kingpin is Wilson Fisk, who poses as a legit businessman. I thought he played a good kingpin. Yeah. Oh, uh, uh, oh yeah. I feel like uh, so. Kingpin is played by the late great Michael Clark Duncan. He's dead. Yeah. No, that guy's so cool. <laughs> he died like ten years ago. Oh fuck. <laughs> yeah. Rest in peace. Uh, uh, yeah, but uh, honestly, I feel like if. Uh, uh, if you had to like look at who was around Hollywood at the at the time, he had to have been top of the list for Kingpin. Yeah, he kills it. Is Kingpin yeah. white or black in the comics? He's white. Oh, okay. Well, they did a good job casting him. Yeah, cause, uh, well, because well, I mean, it, the biggest thing for Kingpin is he needs to be big, intimidating, and the deep voice really sells it. The next morning, Matt and Foggy discuss their finances or lack thereof. At, uh, uh, at a coffee shop, when uh, uh, Matt f- uh, uh, falls for Electra Nachios, uh, uh, who uh, who walks in and like flirt fights with her to get her number. Yeah, it was a bizarre scene. Like he he follows her out, and then she's like, "I don't like being followed." And so then he touches her, and she's like, "I really don't like being touched either." And then he just starts fighting her. And we're supposed to watch, we're like, oh my God, couple like match made in heaven, but it's just bizarre. Yeah. Like the, it's... the pro bono domestic violence lawyer is now just following and beating the crap out of, I like guess he's not beating the crap out of her, but it's a little bizarre. Yeah. yeah like, honestly, uh, uh, like, honestly, uh, uh, watching that scene kind of felt like, Going through uh, through a girl's dating pro uh, dating app for uh, for the first time, it's just like, oh, this is the bullshit you go through. I <laughs> I see why you are the way you are. <laughs> All right, so Electra's fa- uh, uh, father works for Wilson F- uh, 
uh, Fizz, and he tries to end his professional relationship uh, with him. Uh, so Fizz hires a hitman named Bullseye, uh, uh, who has supernatural aim with everything. Uh, and main thing we know about Bull, uh, Bullseye, he's Irish and has no problem killing anyone. Was that Carl Colin Farrell? Yeah. Oh, okay. He did a good job. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. It's also worth uh, worth noting he li literally has a bullseye like etched into his forehead. Well, it's how you find him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean, the thing is, I understand they did that be it, because in Bullseye's classic comic book de but design, he wears like a villain suit, uh, and that has a bullseye on his forehead of the mask. <laughs> And it's like, oh, we're going to make an odd, a, not an odd, a nod to the comics. And we're going to put uh, put that there. And uh, But, like, in real life, it just looks weird. I think they did a good job with it in the sense that, like, I thought the movie was kind of flat, but I thought Colin Farrell did a good job playing, like, a lunatic. And I think that added, like, a nice touch to it. Oh, yeah, because I, uh, I read something where he was talking about this... Uh, movie and apparently when he was cast he he was told like you're not gonna have the suit you're not gonna have the uh, the bullseye so like he focused on getting on getting like all the mannerisms and facial expressions right so i can only imagine his reaction when they put that on on him and he just decided he played around with it really well yeah no i think he like committed to it he yeah didn't phone it in yeah, because there there are parts where he he was like, yeah, they call me bullseye, and then he points at his forehead like, get it, ha ha. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so but, yeah, back to New York. Matt, uh, Matt and Electra they grow closer after she in, uh, invites him to a fundraiser uh, thrown by uh, by her father. He passes up crime fighting for the night to spend the night with her. And and so soon after, Bullseye goes after uh, Electra's father. Dare, uh, Matt, as Daredevil, tries to protect him, but then Bullseye uses Daredevil's weapon to ki uh, kill Electra's father, so she believes Daredevil ki uh, uh, killed him. And, uh, and so she decides to get revenge against Daredevil. And, and then soon after, uh, the reporter, Ben Urich, figures out Matt is Daredevil because he looks at the, the weapon from Forensic Science and it pops out to a blind man's cane. <laughs> <laughs> Which I think it's really funny that Matt had that prepared. Like, the, like he foresaw some scenario where he would use it. Yeah, it's... Yeah, it is a little bizarre. Like, does... <laughs> In the movie, does he use that blind person's cane normally? Yeah, he uses it normally when he's just walking around as Matt Murdock. But I'm just trying to imagine a scenario where he's dressed as Daredevil in that tight leather and uh, he's uh, he's fighting someone and then he's like, oh, I suddenly have to be Matt Murdock. What am I, what am I going to do with this weapon? Okay, also, why is he using a baton as a weapon? <laughs> uh, uh, I mean... I know it's not exactly a baton. It's uh, I forget what it's called, but it's uh, uh, but it's like it's uh, it's like a nunchuck grappling hook thing. I know he he uses it in the comics, so that's where it it comes from. But I I don't remember the name of what, uh, what it's called. But it, uh, but it's it's I feel like it's more like flexible nunchucks. He's just like you know I ran relay in college. <laughs> They're like, yeah, they don't talk about that part of Daredevil. <laughs> <laughs> they're like, did you stop when you were blind? And he's like, I was blind before I got the <laughs> <laughs> uh, Yeah, it's like, uh, yeah, it's like, yeah, my part, uh, my partner just kept clapping when he came near. <laughs> All right, so, uh, so then we build up to final uh, uh, fights. We get, uh, we get some training shots. Then Electra attacks the, uh, Daredevil, tries to get re revenge. She incapacitates him, stabbing him through his shoulder, and uh, uh, and she decides to unmask him, re uh, realizing it's Matt Murdock. And she decides not to uh, 
not to kill him. She finally believes him when he when he says it's Bullseye that killed her father. Uh, uh, but still on assignment, Bullseye kills Electro with Matt Force of Watch. In the ensuing f uh, uh, fight, Bull uh, uh, Bullseye reveals Kingpin killed Matt's father. Uh, uh, and so uh, soon after, Matt defeats Bullseye by putting him in line with a police sni uh, sniper. So Bullseye gets shot in the hand. And then Matt just shows him out a church window. Which I have to say, the fun uh, the funniest thing about that, this dude fell out of like a three-story window onto a cop car and cops immediately just point guns at him. Like, <laughs> you should get him medical attention. <laughs> Did he die? No, he didn't die. Oh, okay. I was about to say, I'm like, three-story. I kind of forgot. I kind of like blanked out a little bit what happened after. <laughs> yeah, he, he didn't die, but he's not getting away. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and so after that, Daredevil fights Kingpin to avenge his father and Elektra. He breaks Kingpin's le uh, legs, but decides not to kill him and leave it for the police for justice. And so the movie ends with Ben Urich typing out an article where he reveals Daredevil's identity, but deletes it before walking out and like sharing a nod of secrecy with Daredevil. Do you think Daredevil was there all night? <laughs> like watching him work on his article and being like, what's his decision? <laughs> but, uh, like that, uh, that's, the, uh, that's the thing. Like keep in mind, this ca came out before smartphones. So he would have had to wait for the morning paper to be released to know where, uh, uh, where he wrote the article or not. And so, uh, uh, so do you think he was just there waiting for, uh, for like, all right, what, uh, uh, all right, where's the truck driver? I need to, uh, to get on that truck. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, yeah, that's the plot of Daredevil for production hi history. As mentioned before, bo uh, both these films, uh, their, uh, their comic rights to the characters were, uh, uh, were sold during the 90s. Uh, fo uh, Fox originally optioned the fi uh, film rights in 1997, but they expired. Disney at the time try, uh, tried again but failed. Columbia Pictures ended up developing the uh, uh, the project, gaining a screenplay from Mark Stephen Johnson, but the development for that broke uh, uh, broke down. Then in 2000, new Regency Productions got the uh, rights with Fox distributing and decided to bring back Mark Stephen Johnson to write and direct. Uh, Kevin Feige who. Uh, uh, who was just a mere executive at Marvel Studios at the time, uh, called it one of the strongest scripts Marvel had received. And uh, and so after the success of Sam Raimi's first Spider-Man movie in 2002, they got a bump in the budget, they, uh, and they, fi uh, they filmed it in, like, spring, su uh, summer of 2002, they originally planned to film it in Canada, but Johnson and cinematographer Erickson Core found an area in LA they thought fit the setting of Hell's Kitchen better. And then it was solidified because Ben Affleck just didn't want to film in Canada. <laughs> Apparently, <laughs> like I don't. Uh, 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 like I, I couldn't find a reason why. I guess, uh, I guess he got the call from his agent. And he was like, "Nah, fuck Canada." No, no. <laughs> I could see Ben Affleck doing that. <laughs> yeah, just, uh, just uh, like he, he probably ha uh, had some like re uh, regular like Tai Chi classes he couldn't skip. <laughs> so the film. Uh, 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 was uh, released in theaters on February four 14th, 2003. Uh, currently it stands at a 43% on Rotten Tomatoes. Interesting enough, the audience score on Rotten Tomatoes is 35%, which it's kind of rare for a film on this podcast to have a lower audience score. <laughs> Where like some of the critics were... Uh, we're like, look, we understand where this is coming from. We're going to give it benefit. And fans are like, we're not going to give it benefit. <laughs> uh, um, it currently stands at a 5.3 on IMDb. It had a $78 million budget and made $179 mil 
million at the box office. So it was a success at the box office. Originally, a sequel was planned and put in development, but Ben Affleck didn't want to do it. <laughs> it it this did lead to an Electra spinoff starring Jennifer Gardner reprising her role in 2005. That was met with critical and commercial failure. It was described as the reason we haven't had a female superhero protagonist for 12 years. Yeah, because it came out the same year as Catwoman. So uh, so it's like movie studios were like, all right, we tried the woman thing and that didn't work. Okay, but I read the plot for it and it's just bananas. None of it makes <laughs> any sense. <laughs> They're like, it, it just seems like something like a methed out 13 year old would come up with. It's like really bad. <laughs> They're like, oh, it's the hand, and the hand's the evil ninjas, and then it's the chest, and the chest are the good ninjas, but to be a good ninja, you have to let go of your emotions, and then you're able to resurrect people? None of it makes any sense. I mean, I mean, to be fair, that uh, that is part of, like, uh, the whole Daredevil ba uh, back uh, story. As a fu uh, fun fact, like, I... I've, I'm blanking on the name, but the original creator of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles apparently found it so, uh, so ridiculous. Half of the Ninja Turtles lore is just making fun of Daredevil. <laughs> yeah, so uh, uh, so like as you uh, as you mentioned, the Dare Daredevil has like the hand ninjas. The, uh, uh, the Ninja Turtles have to fight the Foot Clan. Uh, uh, um, I, Daredevil has a mentor in the comics. Uh, it named Stick. The, the, uh, that's why the turtles have Master Splinter. <laughs> like it's just it's just such a major tr uh, troll job, and uh, and it's amazing. It's had the legacy it has. Yeah, and so another live action and uh, adaptation of Daredevil would uh, uh, would uh, come until 2015, where. The, uh, essentially the rights expired went back to marvel and they d uh, and they developed a live action daredevil sh uh, show which originally ran on net uh, uh, on netflix in tw uh, starting in 2015 three seasons on netflix and as of n now they're reviving it for disney plus was it good yeah it was met with uh, with like praise from critics and fans what about from you yeah, it was amazing. Should I go back and rewatch it? Yes, you should. Okay. Okay, we're going to get into Ghost Rider. Yeah, Ghost Rider. Okay, Ghost Rider. Here's the plot. It's not going to be as formal, so work with me for a second. Johnny Blaze is a 16-year-old stuntman who is the son of a famous stuntman, and he's also in love with Eva Mendez. He ends up making a deal with the devil to save his dad's life. His dad dies the next day in an accident with the devil telling him not to have friends or family. In the future, Johnny is a famous stuntman who returns to his hometown to jump a football field. Originally, he's going to jump cars too, but ended up going to helicopters. Yeah, just real quick, going back to the de uh, deal with the devil, like watching that, I feel like he had no idea what was going on. I had no idea. I had to go back to the Wikipedia article. <laughs> I was like, all right, so he vaguely made a deal with the dad. I don't even think he signed anything. No, uh, no, because what uh, what happened was this random dude walked up to him. It's like, I'm the devil. I can offer you a deal, which he clearly didn't believe him because that's an insane thing to say. And the, uh, and then the devil hands him the uh, hands him the contract. He's like, all you need to do is sign. He opens the contract just to look at it. He uh, it like pricks his finger and some uh, blood drops on the siding line and that was just like you know what good enough <laughs> which is like bad business practices but what can you expect from the devil look i honestly can't even tell if the devil's a bad person in this <laughs> film like i know he's like manipulating people but at the same time all he wants those bounty hunters to do is bring evil spirits back to hell and go around punishing sinners like Okay, we'll get into it. We'll, yeah. we'll get into it. He just it. hires freelance contractors. Yeah, okay. Uh, he ends up making a deal with the devil. To, okay, yada, yada. In the future, Johnny is a famous stuntman who returns to his hometown to jump a football field. There he runs into his past love who briefly in, in, uh, interviews him before he succeeds in the jump. He chases her down on the highway and gets a date. 
However, the night of the date, he is approached by the devil to hunt down three fallen angels and the devil's son who are in search of the contract of San Vengaza, a pledging of a thousand souls to the devil that a previous ghost rider refused to deliver. He goes all fire skull mode and kills the earth angel before going on a city burning tear that results in him burning a mugger's soul. Is that like kind of an accurate description yeah, of what happened? Uh, yeah, that's how I would describe it. I also appreciate like when he runs into Eva Mendez and gives her, her like exclusive interview, he gives her the worst <laughs> interview ever. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Sorry. I also forgot. He was supposed to be going on the date and then the mm -hmm. devil shows up and is like, oh yeah, you got to like go fucking hunt these guys. You don't really have a choice in it. <laughs> and so she's left out. She got stood up on the date. Uh, yeah. Um, the next day he meets with Sam Elliott in a graveyard, uh, who reveals to him that he's a ghost rider, the devil's bounty hunter who will go wild in the presence of evil and hunt down evil spirits and send them to hell. Uh, Johnny runs into Eva, 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 Eva at his apartment who calls him carny trash. And he just goes like, yeah. And then she <laughs> leaves. <laughs> Uh, during the investigation, they find the license plate from his motorcycle. Uh, Johnny starts going ham and just starts reading religious texts to try and control his power. Ev Ava shows up at his apartment. He explains everything to her. He's like, yeah, I made a deal with the devil. I'm now the devil's bounty hunter. She's like, either I have to bring you to a psych hospital because I care about you or you're lying. And so she leaves which honestly, that's like a fair response from her. Like yeah. she was like, "Fuck this noise! I'm not dealing with it." She's like, I mean, "Even if you are crazy, I'm, I'm gonna establish some boundaries." Uh, yeah, that's uh, that's like something you br uh, you bring out when like whenever someone asks you like, "Why are you saying it?" Was like, "Well, my ex boyfriend thinks he works for the devil." Like the uh, like literal Lucifer Morningstar. I. Uh, uh, so yeah, I need to take some time for myself. <laughs> uh, all right. Then, mm -mm. so he gets arrested while he's seeing her out. They throw him. They literally, they don't throw him in like a bad part of the jail. He is just in the drunk tank <laughs> where he runs into a bunch of meth head bikers who are like, you're all, you're Johnny blaze. And he's like, uh, not in here. I'm not Johnny Blaze. And they're like, oh, we're going to fuck you up because for some reason we hate Johnny Blaze. Yeah. Like th they never explain why they hate Johnny Blaze. They're like, just because. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he goes on a tear and kills everybody within the dunk drunk tank, but one black kid, which props to them for just being like, oh, yeah, yeah we're not going to play into racial stereotypes here. All the white people are evil. The one innocent person is a black dude. Yeah, I'm, no, I'm. Uh, yeah, no, I'm thinking about that. It's uh, uh, it's like, uh, look, black teenager in, in, in jail. He's in there for some trumped up charge. Doesn't deserve it. They planned Evans. All the white people, they deserve to be in that cell. Yeah, like it, it was a nice little uh, racial profiling call out. <laughs> so, uh, hang on. Um, Oh yeah, so they he goes wild in the drunk tank, goes out, starts looking for the devil's son, who I forgot to mention his name is Blackheart, uh, runs into the air angel, uh, drives his motorcycle up a building, which is in view of Ava's hotel room, and she was like, oh shit, I don't know what that is, but I'm guessing that is the devil's bounty hunter driving a motorcycle <laughs> up the... Uh, Kills the air angel. He drives the motorcycle down. He like points out Ava and he's like, oh, right. Believe me. <laughs> drives off. Uh, Blackheart's like, oh, you have someone you love. I'm going to fucking work through this. I think she, was she already just at. No, she goes back to his apartment, mm -hmm. runs into the to Johnny's sta uh, stage manager. What yeah, would you call I, that? that's what I would call him. Uh, like, his general manager. Yeah, she's talking to him. Blackheart shows up, corrupts him, turns him into, like, some zombie. I'm not really... It's never clear what process he puts them 
through, but it's like zombification. Yeah, it's, it's some demon magic. Kidnaps Ava, leaves a note. Or no, he doesn't leave a note. He's just there. Uh, he talks to Johnny, leaves, says, get me the contract with all the souls in it. Meet me in... God, sorry, this name always gets me. Uh, meet, meet me in... Uh, shit. What's the name of that town? What's the name of that town? Do you have it on? No, uh, no I, I just said it. Vengaza. Uh, sounds right. All right. Yeah, that's fine. Um, he, so he goes to Sam Elliott, meet, gets the contract. Him and Sam Elliott go turn their heads into flaming skulls. Sam Elliott rides off on a horse. He rides off on a motorcycle. They get to the town. Sam Elliott's like, I could only transform one more time, and this is what I did it for. Uh, Nick Cage runs in there, kills the last remaining angel, rescues Ava. Then uh, Blackheart absorbs all the souls of the town, becomes, what is it, like the the all-encompassing? The United. Yeah. Turns into the United, gets judged by Nick Cage's devil skull eyes, and... So he dies. Then the devil shows up to clear the contract. He's like, have a good life. Have kids. And Nick Cage is like, no, I'm going to stop you. And the devil leaves and it ends with Nick Cage riding off on a motorcycle. <laughs> the devil didn't seem like that bad yeah. of a guy. <laughs> uh, yeah, it, it was just like, okay, you did it. Uh, it, you did a job. Now you're fr uh, now you're free. Yeah, that was wasn't the best plot synopsis. I'm not gonna lie, but also that's a fairly good. There wasn't a lot more to the plot that you need described. It, yeah, like a uh, a lot of the entertainment uh, value was uh, was just the fact Nick Cage was told like, hey. For half of this movie, you're going to be a skull on fire. And he was like, right on. <laughs> okay, so the production started as early as 1992. At one point, Johnny Depp was going to play Ghost Rider. <laughs> and then he ran into scheduling conflicts. And then Nick Cage is apparently a huge Ghost Rider fan. Like, this isn't something where they threw him the money and he was like, yeah, I guess I'll do this. Nick Cage sought it out because he loves Ghost Rider. Uh, or at least that's what Wikipedia said. Um, then there was like a bunch of delays. It ended up getting filmed in 2005. Uh, Nick Cage put a lot of thought into his Ghost Rider uh, originally, like Ghost Rider is a hard driving and smoking badass, but Nick Cage decided to give him more depth. He was quoted saying, I'm playing him more as someone who's made this deal and he's trying to avoid confronting it. Anything he can do to keep it away from him. Cage also explained that Blaze's stunt riding was a form of escape in a way to keep him connected to his deceased father who taught him to ride. Uh, it was directed by Mark Steven Johnson. It was released August. Uh, that's not right. I forgot to correct that. It was de December or no, it was February 16th, 2007. It made a 228. It made 228 million on a 110 million budget. It had a 27% on Rotten Tomato. Tomatoes, my bad. Uh, it spawned a sequel, which is considered worse. And then I just had a little note. Uh, Nick Cage apparently had a $150 million fortune, which was heavily invested in real estate, and he lost all that money. And it's speculated that this is one of the movies he did to pay back the IRS. <laughs> he, he claimed never phoned in a film, and I, I believe it. Oh, yeah. No, he... He has said in an interview that he has done movies just for uh, just for the paycheck, which like it, I know there have been like stories about all uh, all his debt for years. Cause I know at some point he bought like a castle and he just like couldn't afford the castle anymore. But like I believe him when he said he's never phoned in a performance. I think he's got a really weird funeral plot in New Orleans. <laughs> like he's unless I'm mixing him up with another celebrity, he's got this like. 
weird giant funeral plot that's got a huge pyramid on top of it. I, drugs, like, that seems like a drugs thing, but it could also just be like a Nick Cage is a really weird man thing. Oh, yeah. Because when you say he, he, he was a fan of the comics, I just believe it. You could tell me he's a fan of anything. I would just believe you. <laughs> yeah, that's... You're like, oh, yeah, Nick Cage loves ice fishing, but only in one lake in Canada. <laughs> You'd be like, that seems on brand. Like, I, uh, like, honestly, I'm just waiting for, like, a, a, a video from, like, a comic uh, con. You're wondering who's in the, like, My Little Pony co uh, costume take off the mask. Like, oh, my God, it's Nick Cage. <laughs> you, you could tell me he's interested in anything, and I would just believe you. No, nothing seems out of character for him. I mean, he, he had a movie that was just about him. <laughs> like, he... Oh, man, I fucking love Nick Cage. Like... I'm going to watch the Ghost Rider sequel, <laughs> even though it's gotten 11% on Rotten Tomato. Tomato. Why do I keep calling it Rotten Tomatoes? I like run out of steam. <laughs> but yeah, no, Nick Cage is great. Um, right. You want to, how do you want to do this? You want to get this started? Yeah. All right. So now it is time for our opening statements. I will be defending Daredevil. I will be defending Ghost Rider. All right. My opening statements. Imagine a world where the only comic book movies around were so desperate to avoid the feel of a comic book, it upset fans. That's the world Daredevil enters and attempts to break the mold. Mixing classic film and comic book elements, this film showed viewers the potential of the experience and laid the foundation for many of the films we enjoy today. Are we really going to sit here and argue about what movie is better when the main character of one is named Johnny Blaze? <laughs> We're really going to sit here and argue which movie is better than the one about which one is better, the one about the blind lawyer or the saga of Johnny Blaze, messenger of the devil who rides on a chariot of steel and fire. We're not only talking about a character named Johnny Blaze on a chariot of steel and fire. We're talking about a character named Johnny Blaze on a chariot of steel and fire played by Nicolas Cage. <laughs> this movie fucks. <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> I don't need to even say why it's great. I just need to describe the general synopsis of it. <laughs> I feel like the opening statement was just like the opposite of a Russian nesting doll. <laughs> like it was just more and more the further we got in. <laughs> like it, I just, I did, I wrote this in the first sentence of the movie when I'm like, his name's fucking Johnny Blaze. That's the greatest <laughs> main character name I've ever heard in my entire life. I had to go back and look up the cool as ice synopsis because for a second i thought vanilla ice's character was named johnny blaze and i was like because that's the coolest <laughs> name character that i've ever heard in my life yeah i mean i mean with johnny blaze be, uh, being it, he was obviously a stunt performer because there are only so many jobs you can get named johnny blaze i don't know i would hire anybody named Johnny Blaze regardless of what they are offering. I don't know. I feel like it, it, if it's a job like a teacher where you work with kids, the thing is if he gets caught do, doing anything, you, you gotta look at administration and be like, well, this is your fault for hiring someone named Johnny Blaze. Like, I'd go to Dr. Blaze, Dr. Johnny Blaze, and he would be my therapist. And I'd go to him for advice, and he'd be, I'd be like, man, I'm feeling really sad today. And he'd be like, have you tried a backflip? <laughs> what about shooting off fireworks and I'm like I have not tried that Dr. <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> I mean the closest I, I've come across I had a professor in co uh, in college who's uh, who's like name was Dr. Firestone and it's like why are you named after a Pokemon <laughs> <laughs> the thing about Ghost Rider is like I feel like from uh, uh, creatively from uh, from the jump they were instantly put in a box there are only so many directions you you can go when your main character is a flaming skull on a motorcycle named Johnny Blaze and played by Nicolas Cage 
Yeah, well, that's because you don't have to go very far. <laughs> you just, you got everything. You don't really have to do much more. All right, sorry, I interrupted you. Uh, 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 no, uh, no, go on. Oh, yeah, yeah, no, like, I don't know. I wrote down, I was just like, this movie is exactly what it presents itself as, which is fucking awesome. It's Nick Cage playing a character named Johnny K, Johnny, Johnny Blaze, who when he, he senses injustice, turns into a giant flaming skull head and just hunts down evil people. It's awesome. Yeah. I, uh, yeah. The thing is, I, f uh, I feel like he, and keep in mind, it came out four years after, uh, uh, after da uh, Daredevil. It was, uh, there was more of a baseline for comic book movies uh, at, at the time, whereas Daredevil had to exp experiment. The, uh, uh, cause at the time, the, uh, uh, the most successful, uh, really the only successful uh, comic book movie franchise going uh, and going on were X Men, uh, Spider Man, and uh, and Blade, which Spire uh, which Spider Man had only come out the uh, the year before. But all those movies, like they they did not attempt to work in co uh, uh, comic book el uh, elements. I mean, particularly with the X Men movies, they completely got rid of like the colorful costumes. In uh, so I I think they're uh, I think they're the uh, devil like they uh, they like made solid attempts to bring uh, to bring in more comic book elements like there are moments that uh, that are straight up copy uh, uh, copy shot for shot from the comic books. Yeah, but like, what about like Batman or something? I uh, I mean uh, I mean Batman. Uh, so Batman, yes, but those were. De uh, decades before i'm talking specifically about like the early to, uh, uh, 2000s because yeah the tim burton ba uh, uh, batman mo uh, uh, movies i would uh, i would say definitely were uh, in comic elements they it, they kind of set the tone for uh, uh, for the really dark gothic st uh, style that we associate with uh, with, with batman uh, uh, with batman now i do uh, but I do think part of the reason th uh, those films uh, work is because like the, there are elements that re uh, that really just completely distance you from uh, from the real world. Like if you've seen Dane DeVito as, uh, as a penguin, that does not look like a real person at all. Yeah, that's fair. But I disagree. I I don't think that was that big of a jump to be made. In the sense that, like, I don't think that that makes it a better movie than Ghost Rider just because they came a few years earlier. I think I think they had a lot more uh, a lot more work to uh, work to do, and like, com uh, when you compare like what uh, what could have gone wrong versus what uh, what could have gone right, I think that uh, I think there's a lot more that could have gone wrong with Daredevil than uh, than Ghost Rider. What was the budget for Daredevil? The budget what. Uh, uh, was yeah, seventy eight million. Look, they bet a hundred and ten million dollars on Nick Cage playing a flame skull guy during. Wait, no, the recession was two thousand eight. Oh my god, I, I... Uh, yeah, but uh, uh, yeah, but the, uh, uh, yeah, but where did that bu uh, budget go? Most of it went to like uh, motorcycle shots. <laughs> There's some sick motorcycle shots. That budget wasn't wasted. Like, like that, uh, that's it. I mean, there, uh, I mean, Daredevil had to, uh, had to like incorporate, incorporate like CGI to make him uh, look more athletic. And it's like, it's techniques that are now used in modern MCU movies. It, uh, uh, like it's stuff like that, that like laid the groundwork. Yeah. I don't know. I guess that's kind of the feeling I got watching Daredevil where I was just like, Oh yeah, I could kind of see this being a lower tier MCU movie. When I watched Ghost Rider, I was like, "Where the fuck is this in the MCU? This is great." Why wasn't the MCU? It should have just the MCU. <coughs> fuck Iron Man. It should have just started with Ghost Rider. <laughs> <laughs> like, they, oh, dude, fucking Ghost Rider was so good. They keep. They're like, oh, we're bringing back Jennifer Gardner for her role as Elektra and Deadpool and Wolverine. I'm like, no, 
Bring back Nate, Nick Cage as Ghost Rider. <laughs> I'm uh, I'm just imagining like Steve Rogers having to w- work with go- uh, Ghost Rider. It's like, are we uh, are we seriously talking to someone who's contracted by the devil? <laughs> Okay, yeah, that's the other thing. I feel like the devil is a protagonist. Awesome protagonist. I mean, antagonist, my bad. I don't know. I feel uh, I didn't feel like the devil was particularly an antagonist. He, he felt like a support. He felt like a nuisance at, at at times, but it was like the entire movie he wasn't like fighting the devil. He was what? fighting the devil's son. Yeah, yeah. He he was on uh, he was on co- uh, contract. Like he's uh, uh, <laughs> like I, it, he's not uh, he's not doing it out of righteousness. He's just getting a ten ninety nine out of it. Look, Ghost Rider was the first movie to show the true nature of the gig economy, <laughs> <laughs> and that's representation we don't really have anymore. Yeah, as opposed to, uh, as opposed to Spider Man who uh, who has to deliver p- uh, pizzas, to, uh, do photography for. Uh, uh, for a high-profile newspaper, all while being a college student. Yeah, but that's a salary. He might be getting commission, but it's mostly a salary. That's not salary. That's salary. He gets paid per photo. He, uh, if J. Joe and Jameson d- uh, decides he doesn't want pictures of Spider Man that uh, that day, he doesn't get paid. Oh, I thought he got paid like a base salary, kind of like tipping almost. No, I think I think the way it's set up is like for certain events, it, it, it's just like, oh, right, we'll give you a press pass, uh, but uh, but overall, it's uh, it's more it's more like a first look deal. Like he he goes to J. Joe and Jameson first. Oh yeah, I've got a question for you. How many giant flaming skull heads were there in Daredevil? Because there were two in Ghost Rider. Uh, all right, they. Uh, uh, yeah, all right. They also desecrate a church, so I feel like that evens out. Oh yeah, they do des, but they no, nah, they desecrate multiple churches in Ghost Rider. I don't know what how if we're getting into an argument that good movies have to be <laughs> sacrilegious. <laughs> we're like, oh yeah, no, he stepped on a crack, but that crack is kind of cross shape in that shot. So, uh, great film. <laughs> I uh, I mean also. Uh, uh, I mean, also, it's like you, you get like one motorcycle stunt outside. Uh, outside of that, the action in Go, uh, Ghost Rider w- uh, wasn't too gr- uh, great. It's just guys st- uh, staring at each other. It's uh, it's like in Harry Potter when like a fight scene is just two people pointing a wand at each other. Except it's not as good CGI. Okay, now they, I don't think it's an it's like an action movie. It's a character piece. You're watching the saga of Nick Cage playing Ghost Rider, of Johnny Blaze. It's you're just you're watching this man have like a a second chance at life and conquering fear. It's not like an action movie. It's sold as an action movie to get people into the seats, but it, it's very much like an emotional journey. Yeah, I I feel uh, I feel like it. It just feels it feels more like uh, like an MCU movie that doesn't have the balls to uh, to be rated R. Like the uh, uh, like it felt uh, it felt like you come uh, you come here for the uh, the flaming skull head that uh, uh, that's the main appeal all the uh, all the way through uh, through and then you watch people burst into flames. Because we also spend a lot of time with like the villains, and all that it they do is turn people into like ash zombies. Yeah, they they didn't really need to show that much what they're doing. Mm-hmm. I'll admit that fault. Um, <clears throat> ah shit, I'm blanking out. Uh, also, if we're talking about character driven, I think Daredevil ha- ha- has that be that is all about inner uh, inner conflict. Uh, uh, flicked and has a a lot of shots that are actually pre- uh, pretty well put uh, put together to uh, to show that we spend a lot of t- uh, uh, of time with him co- uh, uh, like going over his uh, his decision to like do ju- uh, do justice h- uh, himself feeling like he has to go uh, go outside of a system he's a par- uh, he's a part of as well as hit uh, his guilt over uh, over like what he promised his father. Uh, yeah, I don't. I just don't think it tracked that well. <clears throat> I didn't really care about Daredevil that much. Like I just thought I was like, oh okay, he's blind, 
and he wants to help people. I just like every single time he's like, I'm not the bad guy. I was like, you know who says that? Bad guys. Maybe the Kingpin's performing like a vital service for the city. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, but that, uh, but that's kind of the point, and I think that's something that Electra br brings out of him because at some point he does kind of kind of realize, oh, the only person he can really re relate to is an undercover like ninja assassin. Did was she explicitly an undercover ninja assassin? She she clearly has some sort of assassin training and her dad works in crime. Can we just like talk for a second where he's like, where'd you learn to fight like that? And she was like, my dad had me train with a different sensei every year. And then he was just like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Like, I, I'm just imagining it's like 20 different senseis, but they all teach the exact same martial art. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, uh, well, I would say that's uh, that's learning different techniques. Yeah, I don't know. I thought the line was a little odd. There were like a few parts in that movie where I was just laughing at some of the stuff they said. Mm -mm. Where I'm like, that, that tried really hard to sound cool, but it's just like a bizarre thing that no one would ever really say. <laughs> I, th I think they couldn't really decide how campy they wanted to be. And I think that's kind of where Daredevil f fell flat a little bit. I, I mean, I felt like a, uh, a lot of it was like straight, uh, straightforward until they got hit with like, uh, uh, with like a lot of tr uh, tros from the, uh, from the early two thousands that, uh, uh, that it's like, Felt like oh the studio decided this like the, uh, like the entire rock soundtrack uh, uh, I think uh, I think with uh, uh, with like making a lot uh, a lot of the uh, ac uh, action agility stuff uh, so CGI as a uh, opposed to a stunt performer to like make it more uh, more su uh, super hu uh, human I I feel like left up to the filmmakers it would just been a stunt performer. Also, what about that dual training scene where they're they're both training to the name? What what's is that like the one that goes like wake me yeah, up? Yeah, Evanescence. Wake me up inside. Mm -hmm. I was like, okay, that's corny as fuck. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, but uh, okay, but again, Spy uh, the first Spider Man movie hired Nickelback to make a song for it. That uh, that's just something that was of the time. No, no, it felt like I. I hear that it was a little dated in its soundtrack, but I, mm -hmm. I could admit, I was like, okay, this probably slapped that year. You're like this year. You're like, oh man, this mu music is cutting edge. Yeah. I also just, I feel like daredevil did a good job of like blending genre or not daredevil ghost Rider did a good job of blending genres a little bit where it's like this quasi Southern or Western set in an urban setting that involved like action and superheroes that they did a cool, like a good job with that. Okay. With, with the setting based on Nick Cage's accent, I have no idea where this took place. Neither do I. <laughs> <laughs> like it, uh, like it, would ch it, it changed up so much. Cause, uh, cause there was one scene he was, uh, he was talking to even uh, Mendez. He was, uh, he he was given like some mix between like Midwest and nor Northeast accent, and then he goes like, "Yeah, we could go for some Italian," which I feel like it sounds like someone making fun of a Southern accent. I feel like he had just seen Sling Blade or something, <laughs> <laughs> and he just couldn't make the decision, which is a classic Johnny Blaze move. I haven't read any of the comments. <laughs> Look, as I'm just gonna like chalk up anything out about that. I'm like, well, his name was Johnny Blaze. He could really do anything he wanted with a name that cool. I, uh, that that's one of those. Uh, that's one of those uh, names where it's uh, uh, where it's like you, you ever hear uh, hear of like sometimes w uh, when women get married and they give up a really cool. Uh, uh, last name for uh, for like Smith or something. That uh, that's one of those names where, uh, where it's like if I found out while well, my friends gave up the last name Bl Blaze for uh, uh, for Smith, I might stop talking to them. Yeah, like I mean, you know, do what you want. It's always your choice, but fundamentally, you made the wrong decision. Look, 
<clears throat> sure is a great last name once you make it out of high school because <laughs> you have a lot of teachers being like are you sure mr sure and you're like it's mrs one <laughs> <laughs> two i actually am not sure but you can't say that but like if i married a woman named blaze you bet your ass i'm changing my last name maybe hyphenate it like blaze sure uh, yeah i mean uh yeah, I mean, with uh, with me, a hyphen, a last name because my parents don't get along. Um, <laughs> like, it, uh, like you got you got to be careful with the first name on that one. Yeah, I would say uh, say with the, uh, with Daredevil, they also like really layered uh, uh, layered the myst uh, the mystery al uh, along, like because uh, the entire t uh, time it's like. The reporter and Matt Murdock don't realize that the the kingpin they're they're searching for is Wilson Fisk, and that dude is right in front of him at certain, and right in front of both of them at certain points in the in the movie, and so uh, and so like watching them slowly figure out uh, figure out to, uh, together that was a uh, that was a nice like supporting story to tie into everything because there are also times where it's like Matt Murdock not knowing he. Uh, He's uh, he's talk uh, he's like talking to like the big cr uh, crime boss straight up confronts F uh, uh, Fisk and he's like he could kick your ass you should be careful. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I didn't really. I don't think it really gave that much depth to it, but that's my own opinion. I don't know. It just kind of you're like okay, he'll get there eventually. I uh, I mean I felt uh, like it was a unique way, uh, way of structure that made uh, that made it flow along because like also the entire time the reporter is all, is trying to figure out who uh, who dare the uh, devil is which is a guy that he keeps running into people who don't believe Daredevil devil actually exists which feel uh, which feels cr uh, crazy. It's, I'm sorry. I got to uh, divert to like the first f uh, fight scene when they're uh, when it's just like the reporter and the police at the crime uh, at the crime scene. The uh, the police uh, are like, "You really think Daredevil uh, uh, exists?" And then the reporter like throws his cigarette on the ground, which lines up perfectly to like this uh, to like this uh, uh, this like daredevil used like gas to write his daredevil logo on the uh, uh, on the ground and that lights up and the reporter is like you still think daredevil doesn't exist which one that part was conveniently taped off already how did they know to do that with uh, without lighting it already number uh, uh, number two why waste your time doing that uh, in a way where it's like someone just happens to light it at the right spot or else they're not gonna see it number three how does a blind person do that <laughs> like I uh, I know he can basically see with sonar and uh, and all that but still like I feel like writing letters is tough especially especially like I can see and it's hard to keep a line that straight and with liquid gasoline whoa, whoa, whoa but he got radioactive waste in his eyes so now he has heightened senses like a blind person but also improved physical performance for some reason <laughs> Did, did they, they are vaguely, they're like, and I had more agility too. Like what, how did he have more agility now that he's blind? Uh, I mean, it, they were working with the superhero rules. It's like toxic waste just gives you powers. Also, can we stop for a second and just bring up the fact like, yeah, Ghost Rider might be a little kitschy and whatnot, but they literally caught him because his, his superhero weapon also is like, uh, blind person's cane just like ready to go <laughs> any minute <laughs> was that played for laughs or was that supposed to be a shocking moment if you saw it in theaters in 2003 i i don't think it was supposed to be shocking i th i think that was just the uh, the moment the reporter put everything together yeah but like if you were watching that in theaters was that were they going for a laugh because if it were the mcu I think it would go for a laugh in that moment, but like early 2000s superhero movies, do you think that was a joke or do you think they're just like, Oh yeah, this is like the weapon he uses and this is a real outcome 
of using that weapon. I uh, I can see I can see as a joke because like uh, uh, as serious as some of Daredevil was, they still had moments of levity th uh, throughout. It wasn't a total downer. Also, wait, I'm blanking. That was Kevin Feige who was playing his lawyer friend, right? No, that uh, that was John Favreau. Oh, John, F I always mix up those two names. Yeah, he looked good when he was really young. Yeah, he. It's fu it's funny that he's like now one of the top working directors in uh, in Hollywood because it's like you it, you go back to a lot of movies in the early two thousand. He just has small bits uh, uh, throughout a lot of them. Yeah, I. You should like I love him as Happy Hogan, and this was like right up his alley. Yeah, like that's one thing I'll also say about the uh, Daredevil, like. The the cast uh, the cast in general was really good. Like I didn't uh, uh, like especially all the supporting parts like John Favreau as uh, uh, as Foggy. He was just clearly there for comedic relief in certain se scenes, and uh, and he did that while bringing up like uh, uh, essentially how Matt Murdock's personal life isn't going uh, uh, well uh, despite all the Daredevils. Uh, stuff um we've already discussed michael clark duncan as kingpin like n nailed it like ha like be it like as someone who thoroughly enjoy enjoyed the daredevil series on netflix i will uh, say like his depiction of King kingpin is one is one aspect that uh, that goes absolutely toe-to-toe -to -toe with the daredevil series <laughs> and and then colin Firth as bullseye he nailed what he had. He, uh, uh, I, I would call him a scene stealer. Yeah, you no, know, he did a good job. I can admit that. But like, as good as the name Johnny Blaze, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> okay, there's only so far a character name can carry a no, story. No, it will carry it infinitely. It's the greatest <laughs> character name that's ever been created. Johnny okay. Blaze. I don't know. I just was like losing my fucking mind watching. <laughs> um, you want to get into three things? Yeah. All right. So now it's time for our concessions. This is where I give three things I didn't like about Daredevil and Chris gives three things she didn't like about Ghost Rider. All right. My first one, I will say it should have been much more campy. Uh, like particularly... Uh, Particularly because of like how the, how like not realistic the VFX was at, at the time. Like I like part of me w uh, wants to think they it, it, they wrote, they wrote the script and finalized a lot of creative uh, stuff before they saw like VFX test footage, and so they didn't fully know what it was going to look like. Because I think if if they just played into like more uh, more camp, everything else works. Yeah, that's fair. Uh, oh, Jesus Christ, I'm blanking. Um, oh, yeah, it doesn't make that much sense plot-wise. <laughs> it just doesn't. Like, maybe this is, like, a lore issue. But, okay, so Johnny Blaze made a contract with the devil and became Ghost Rider, and his job is to hunt down evil spirits and send them back to hell I, is he a good or bad guy? Like, is the devil a bad guy? Does the afterlife exist? I just, like, don't quite get it. Okay, from what I gather from, uh, uh, from the movie, I would say probably the uh, uh, the afterlife does, it, uh, uh, does exist. I think when the devil originally contracted Johnny, he... Uh, he was just like, mm, I may need some new employees soon, which I know is like twenty years later or or, or whatever. But uh, but I mean, when you're immortal, twenty years feels like the next day. Yeah. And so, and so then he was just like, Hey, I need I need you to like do this jo do this job for me. And and then like. He took care of a big job, so that was like mm, that's actually worth a lot of jobs. So you're free. Okay. I don't know why he decides to still like essentially be on devil's payroll. We're all the town, like the town where everyone signed their soul over to the devil. 
were they all ghost riders? No, I do not think they were ghost riders. Those were souls Sam Elliott was uh, was supposed to collect, but then he refused. But he was the one with the contract, so someone else needed to pick up the contract to collect the souls. Yeah, this is what I'm talking about. All of this is nonsense. <laughs> All of this is nonsense wrapped around the greatest name that's ever been created in cinema history. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, my my next concession, the plot did need more of a central driving force. Uh, because, uh, because, like, it's clear Matt and the reporter both want to, like, find Kingpin, but they're not super urgent about it. I mean, Matt... Uh, I mean, it almost seems like Matt takes a soul, total side quest to get with Electra, and then she, and then it's like she doesn't have anything she urgently needs to do until the very end. Like if if everyone just had like set missions and then they collide with each other, I think it w they could have gotten a lot more out of it. Yeah, I I don't really know what her whole deal was. She kind of left more questions than she provided like plot progress for yeah, yeah. and it's like uh, so i uh, i haven't read amd electro co uh, comics i just remember when she appeared on the daredevil series i was just like oh i like this character but then everyone i saw who read daredevil comics uh, was like this isn't the real electra so i was like all right i guess i just have no idea who electra is <laughs> <laughs> um the CGI wasn't great. I think it was like fine for the film, but honestly, the giant flaming skull head, you really just got to accept it for what it is or else it's going to be a terrible movie. Yeah. Like, yeah. That's something where you, you really have to just go, uh, go in. It's like, we are watching Nick Cage with a flaming skull on a motorcycle. Yeah. Yeah. Which oddly enough. So, uh, so on the TV show agents of shield, which, I believe is part of the MCU. A different character of Ghost Rider is on there. I'm pretty sure, sure the CGI looks about the same. Well, yeah, it's fine. It's like a hard thing to pull off, I feel like. Yeah, especially because like that's a character design where I feel like with, with Flames, it's like it's not a solid object and always constantly moving. Well, they had a segment in it for the Wikipedia article and essentially... They had to have an entire CGI team just for the flaming skull head because they had to do it shot by shot to make it look oh. even half decent. So I think it was a hard pull like thing to create. It wasn't the worst thing I've ever seen, but like it, if you're not down for it, it's it deserves that 27% on Rotten Tomatoes. Yeah. But if you're mm -hmm. down for it, I think that rating should be like a 50 to 60. Yeah. I mean, I also feel like that uh, that's something where it's like if the, uh, if that takes you out uh, out of the movie, I feel like you you just shouldn't wa uh, watch this movie. I can't imagine someone explaining this like, oh yeah, I was uh, I was really enjoying it until uh, until like the subpar CGI on the flaming skull head. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a really fair point. <laughs> All right. Uh. My final concession, his like powers were pretty inconsistent. Like, because uh, uh, when he first uh, when he first gets them, they they show it as like sonar as like absolutely every uh, everything around uh, around him just appears as sonar in his hospital uh, room. Which like I can't uh, I kind of get that they're trying to show how overwhelming it is. But it's like. Also, he's on the twelfth floor of the hospital. Uh, like, how's he hearing all the construction on the uh, on the ground f uh, floor and not like the other people in the hospital? Uh, like, but when, when he also hears balls rustling and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just uh, just like uh, hearing his own heartbeat. But then it's like later uh, later in the movie, it's like he uh, it's like we see in his initial like flurrying fight. Uh, with Electra, it's like he can see things per uh, perfectly or narrowly, but then later it's like, oh, he ne he needs the rain to see like perfect crystal clear pi uh, pictures, and uh, like when he's fighting Kingpin, it's uh, and it's like 
you need to decide exactly how, uh, how these like sonar uh, uh, sonar powers you made up work. Yeah, they are a little all over the place with it. Unlike Ghost, <laughs> <laughs> uh, for my final point, Eva Mendez. Eva Mendez just kind of seems like she exists purely to be a love interest for Johnny Blaze. Yeah, like her her character really does nothing but just be like, oh, okay, yeah, whatever you say, Johnny Blaze, like. Let's just immediately move past like the 20 year time gap and the fact that you stood me up when you said we were going to get married and I'll just, I've been waiting for you the whole time. Yeah. The, uh, yeah. Cause that's the thing. Cause also, uh, cause also like they made her a uh, reporter, with, uh, which is like a skill that's pretty easy to use in a movie, like investigative skills. So it's like, it's kind of weird. They didn't use any of that, but yeah, they did like complete. Uh, they did like quickly skim over, you know, her be uh, being just left uh, there 20 years ago because she was just like, do you know how embarrassing it is to tell your parents you're getting married and then you don't? <laughs> <laughs> also, she was like, you're carny trash. That's all you'll ever be. And then she comes back. She's like, that isn't the last thing I wanted to say to you. Like bullshit. He stood you up 20 years ago. Then he stood you up again, and you're like, okay, now I need to come back and hear the, like, fuck that noise. Yeah, yeah. like, I, I feel like that's one of those things where if one of your friends is, tell, uh, is telling you this story, and it ends with, and then I went back to his apartment, you're like, oh, you need therapy. <laughs> and then he told me I'm the devil's bounty hunter, and I left again. And then I ran into a big, giant, flaming skull guy, and I was like, that's the devil's bounty hunter. So I came back. Then I got kidnapped by the devil's son, <laughs> and I was like, oh, okay, well, he'll come. Then he came. I don't even know if they got together in the end. <laughs> <laughs> like, he just rides off. I, I want to fucking see the... Also, they kept beat the devil's like, you can't... Is that like, you can't find love when you're the devil's bounty hunter? Or is he like physically just a curse that ruins other people's lives? I, I kind of uh, took it as the uh, the latter. I uh, I kind of took it as like uh, the classic superhero thing, where it's just like, oh, when you take on this life, the people you're putting the people you love in danger, uh, uh, which is like, it. Uh, I mean, it took the devil twenty years to pick up the tab. He could have had a nice life. Yeah, he. I like the whole time I was like, do you think he fuck? Do you think he fucks? Like his name's Johnny Blaze. <laughs> He's like a famous stunt man. Also, I had another thought about stuntmen. When you buy tickets to go see a stuntman, so like you go to the stadium and it's for a big jump. And so you're just waiting around for an hour and a half. And then he <laughs> jumps and he lands it and you're like, all right, let's go home. Yeah, that's what I was wondering too. Cause I'm like, I'm, I'm thinking like, is this like a concert or a comedy show where they get like, uh, you know, the warm up acts? Uh, just be like, all right, this is like a not as big. Uh, uh, artists, they're gonna get the crowd going. Like they, uh, like they have mini stunts along the way, <laughs> <laughs> which is like I can't. I also can't imagine being in summer form and being one of the mini stunts, like getting injured on someone's mini stunt. <laughs> yeah, in the the opening scene when he's showing off to Ava and he hits a little rock and like scoots around, and the dad's mm -hmm. like, "This is why you don't act like that." <laughs> I guess that's fair, but like. <sighs> Seem I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I feel like it, it, hitting the rock. That's something where it's like you should have had a crew check like the uh, the performance area before then. Yeah. You ready for a closing statements? Yeah. All right. Uh, uh, my cl uh, uh, my closing statement is Daredevil perfect? No. If it was, we wouldn't be talking about it. What it is is ambitious in a world we where we didn't know what that looked like. The cast delivers with the best soundtrack of 2003. And thanks to this film's contributions to the genre, if we if we don't get this film and films like it, we likely don't get films like Watchmen, we don't get the MCU, and we don't get Spider-Verse. The biggest tragedy is we'll never know where the story was meant to go. Ghost Rider 
is one of a giant catalog of amazing Nicolas Cage movies. You're like, but Chris, it's about a guy with a giant flaming skull head. It knows what it is and it sticks to that. And if you don't like what it is, it doesn't need you. It is a fun time. Nick Cage acts his ass off. It doesn't have to be something amazing because all it needs to be is great, which is what it is. Johnny Blaze out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm surprised Johnny Blaze out isn't a line from the movie. <laughs> <laughs> they did have like one really corny line at the end, but I'm blanking on what it... It was something about like burning like fire. But I I honestly kind of forgot a lot of that. <laughs> yeah. No, because also like it, you think he's an entertainer. You think he'd have like some cool like catchphrase involving his uh, his name. Get blazed, Johnny boy. <laughs> but no. He's too cool for that. I was trying to think that like Johnny Blaze kind of has like I'm forgetting on what I came up with, but there he has this kind of like out there celebrity persona. Oh, he kept reminding me of uh, Matthew McConaughey's character from uh, True Detective, where in the beginning they keep asking, they're like, what do you want to do? And he's like, I don't know, man, I want like a second chance at life. Do you think people get those? Like he, he kept talking in very like esoteric terms about himself. <laughs> But yeah. All right. All right. Well, this has been another episode of Film versus Movie. Don't forget to check the link in the episode description or Instagram bio to vote on who you think won this face off. <laughs> Thank you, and we will see you next time. <laughs>